Thanks very much for the opportunity to speak today. And we're going to switch gears a little bit in terms of disease processes. But uh, from a technical standpoint, you'll see a lot of similarities uh, to what's been presented already. So these are my disclosures, none of which are pertinent to my talk. So when we look at uh, interventional therapy uh, for gastroparesis, there's a spectrum. Uh, many of these are, are palliative uh, and address enteral access and decompression. Um, and there are options for stimulation, uh, resection, and reconstruction. But really what I want to focus on is the uh, similarity of pyloroplasty uh, and pyloromyotomy and how we can transition that from a surgical procedure uh, to an endoscopic procedure. So I think this is nicely born in the literature uh, from the Oregon group. Looking at laparoscopic pyloroplasty uh, is safe and effective first-line uh, therapy for gastroparesis. But if we do the same procedure just now on the end of a flexible endoscope, uh, equivalent to a laparoscopic operation, uh, and, and they've published that experience as well. So I'm going to talk about peroral pyloromyotomy, uh, also known as G-POEM, uh, and what that looks like. So similar to POEM, this is a submucosal procedure. We prefer the, the lesser curve uh, technique. Uh, injecting uh, a bleb and allowing access to that submucosal tunnel, accessing that with a cap, dissecting down to the pylorus and dividing the pylorus, and then coming back uh, and dividing the muscle onto the distal stomach, and then closing the access site. So I'm not going to talk about data. I have a very brief uh, uh, time frame here. Uh, we published our initial experience. Uh, I'm going to show you a video how to do this, and we'll be presenting our initial 100 patients at American Surgical in, in just a week. So what does it look like from a technical standpoint? So we do this under general anesthesia. It can be done in the operating room or the endoscopy suite. And a lot of the tools are similar to what we do for POEM procedure. The procedure actually is, is shorter uh, than what a POEM is. We give uh, preoperative antibiotics uh, consistent with skip guidelines. We prefer kind of more of a flexible cap. We use the uh, RFA cleaning cap for, for Barrex, uh, and we tilt it so that the bevel comes out at the 6 o'clock position. We use CO2. Uh, these are our Irby uh, settings, and uh, we do methylene blue injection uh, with epinephrine uh, to allow for uh, hemostasis as well. So what does it look like? In the operating, we do it a little bit differently than POEM. So in POEM, we stand at the head of the patient. Uh, for POP, we stand on the side. The patient can be supine or in a left lateral decubitus position. Um, and the anesthesiologist stays at the head. We put the uh, monitor opposite of us, uh, and this is what the setup looks like in the operating room. So if we go back to that image, Initially, we go about three to four centimeters proximal to the pylorus along the lesser curve uh, and use a standard sclerotherapy needle for injection, elevation of the mucosa, and this is going to allow us to access that submucosal plane, uh, similar to POEM. But we don't have to tunnel quite as far because our target is the pylorus, and unlike POEM, we have to cut down onto the gastric cardia, we're really dividing the pylorus uh, alone here. But we want to make sure that we get onto the duodenum. So uh, injection and elevation, once this is accomplished, we use a TT knife here. Uh, different than POEM, we make a, a transverse incision. And it's usually about two centimeters uh, wide to allow for access into that submucosal plane. Well, for the sake of time, we're, we're short, so I apologize. It's a great video. So we dissect down onto the, uh, the pylorus. We make sure we get onto the duodenum and that submucosal plane, and then we make a retrograde incision of the pylorus, usually about two centimeters back onto the stomach. We come out of that submucosal plane and close it with a series of clips, similar to what you'd see in a poem. So this is what it looks like 10 days post-op. This patient had some abdominal pain. This is the mucosotomy access site. Uh, healing. It's important to keep these patients on PPIs postoperatively and uh, uh, barrier therapy as well. And for gastroparesis, which is an incredibly challenging patient population to deal with, we've had good results. Uh, Indoluminal applications of surgical techniques seems to be a good option for these patients. Uh, and, and please check out our, our data for further follow-up, but 
it's an emerging option uh, in a difficult patient population and, and seems reasonable. Thank you very much.